morning. Well, Linda Burney is Labor's Shadow Minister for Families and Social Services. Linda Burney, welcome to breakfast. Good morning, Fran. Linda Burney, before we get to the Australian economy, there's breaking news out of the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced there that Brits can only leave home to shop for basic essentials, one form of exercise per day, and to get to work only if necessary. Is Australia heading towards that path? Uh, well, the escalation, the speed, the changes that are taking place hour by hour, I think Australia is heading for a much more difficult experience than what we're having now, Fran. I do think that. Uh, I'll come to the Centrelink and how it's coping. We heard the Minister Anne Ruston there saying they've been working on this for weeks. But before we get to that, it does look as though uh, one million Australians will lose their jobs or will be working reduced hours in the short term. That seemed to be the implication of what the Treasurer said yesterday. Already we're seeing mass layoffs in tourism and hospitality sectors, but elsewhere too. How bad do you see it getting on the jobs front? Are we heading to unemployment at over 10%? I think we are heading for massive unemployment and that's what is being played out and that's why the lines around Centrelink were so long yesterday. It strikes me that there are some things that the government can do uh, urgently to ameliorate as much as possible the pain that people are experiencing. Um, I'm in an electorate office and right across this country people are ringing, they are um, scared, they are confused and they are stressed because of uh, drastic changes to their uh, financial situation mm. and what they thought that was, their, was going to be their future. What they want is care, what they want is answers and what they want is urgency. Yes, I mean, it's the speed of this that has really shocked people and you can see the shock and disbelief uh, and fear and distress on the faces of all those people queuing yesterday. What are the urgent measures that you are recommending to the government? Well, the first thing is that the government needs to be absolutely clear and honest with people. Uh, and we saw the ridiculous uh, performance by... Uh, the Minister for Social, uh, the Minister of Stuart Robert yesterday giving wrong information. We saw other ministers giving wrong information tomorrow, uh, yesterday. Ministers need to be absolutely across their portfolio and they need to be able to clearly articulate to people honestly and with care. Uh, what they are eligible for, what they are not eligible for. Uh, the measures, Fran, that I think Centrelink should be uh, immediately putting in place are fairly simple. There should be a hotline. There is not a hotline at the moment for people seeking information. At the moment, there are, there are up to 10 numbers you ring uh, for different payments and uh, uh, whether it's unemployment, disability, age, pension. Mm -hmm. That has to be a single number in my view. Right. I think the other thing is that uh, there needs to be uh, an understanding that people will queue again today because they are confused. They are confused on whether they have to attend Centrelink offices or whether they have to uh, go online and whether everyone has the capacity to go online. The government needs to understand that. I think the other thing that would be extremely useful um, is the urgent bringing on of more staff. But Centrelink was broken well before this virus, so let's be honest about that. The Minister has um, said there will be an extra 5,000 staff employed by Centrelink. Obviously, that's going to take a little bit of time to gear up. But is it the hands on deck or is it the technology? I mean, we saw my government crash so quickly yesterday because more than 50,000 people uh, rang up, rang up, you know, tried to get on rather at once. Um, I mean, I think it is both, Fran. It is uh, hands on deck. I mean, uh, observing social distancing and so forth, there is no reason why um, staff cannot uh, advise people who are lining up for hours on uh, how long they're going to be there and they're doing their best. And Can I just ask you about the lining up? Uh, why are people lining up for Centrelink? The ATO presumably has details for every worker who's lost their jobs because they've been paying tax. Why can't the ATO coordinate with Centrelink? I think they share information, they're linked anyway, to streamline this process. Why was there any need for anyone to line up to go into a, Centre, uh, a Centrelink office? 
This because people are confused and people are frightened. And I can absolutely understand if you're suddenly uh, both both part, uh, part, you and your partner have been laid off or your partner's been laid off to know exactly what you're eligible for. And I am pleased to see overnight that the government has expanded the um, the coronavirus supplement to include include students. But there, are, there is mass confusion um, in the public and people are worried about their future and that's why they're lining up. OK, but just to be clear on that, should they be lining up or should, the, should Centrelink and the ATO be able to have it covered so everybody can get, apply for their payment uh, uh, online or over the phone, I guess? Uh, well, not everyone has the capacity no. to apply online, and particularly older Australians. And the other thing, of course, is that Centrelink is incredibly bureaucratic, and it would appear to me that people need assistance and clear information and not to have to go through the incredible red tape that is tied up with payments. I mean, the, the payment, uh, the fortnightly supplement that's going to be um, introduced uh, the, effectively the doubling of... Um, yes, the $550 coronavirus uh, sub, but that that's, doesn't, that's not paid until April the 27th. Is there any, one, any way it can be pushed out earlier and is the government considering that, do you know? Well, our, our, our um, Labor is arguing that that is ridiculous, that it's five weeks away before people can get uh, that supplement. People are self-isolating now, people are getting sick and the exponential growth and change in this vir uh, in the virus and the information um, and what states and territories are doing are, are feeding into that anxiety and five weeks away is a very long time for some families. We're arguing very strongly, uh, get the payments out, uh, cut the red tape and worry about the paperwork uh, later. People need help now. It's hard. I mean, this is all happening so quickly. It's not surprising, I suppose, that our Centrelink and social welfare systems are overwhelmed in the short term. The minister says they have been preparing this for weeks. It did fail at the first hurdle. But let's, let's um, you know, give the government the benefit of the doubt yes. on that front. But in terms yes. of eligibility, there's some confusion too. The Finance Minister, Matthias Cormann, said yesterday, I think, that if a person loses their job, they would receive the new bolstered a job seeker payment, the coronavirus supplement, even if their partner is earning $70,000. Now, I asked the Treasurer yesterday about a sacked Qantas worker. He told us they'd be paid even if their partner's earning. Are you clear? Is there an income test per family applied to this coronavirus supplement? Do you know yes, the answer? Uh, yes, I, yes, I do. The answer is yes, there is an income test. And that is one of the giant holes uh, in the uh, in the social security or the changes that have been made if there is a couple uh, the liquid assets test uh, has been waived that is if you've got money in the bank or shares or something but the income test still applies so that means if uh, if the main breadwinner in the house uh, loses their job and the second partner uh, is on less salary. It is that salary that will be assessed. So the Minister, Minister Cormann was absolutely wrong about uh, about saying that uh, saying that that, that they, they would be eligible for the payment. That is so. Just to be clear, what is the income test then of the other person in the house who still has a job? What's the uh, income limit? Well, it is un it's unclear. My understanding is that it is around 70000 but we're trying to see clarification on that today. But it is definitely... The income test still definitely applies. OK, so if someone's earning 100000 or 120000 then you, the other person will not be eligible for that coronavirus supplement? That's correct. All right. Well, we'll you try and clarify that. We'll try and clarify that because I think a lot of people are standing by to understand that. Linda Burney, thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. Thank you, Fran.